2,800 Uyghur Muslims detained by China. They were put in detention camps in 2018 in the western region of Xinjiang, many on dubious charges. Some were flagged by a surveillance system built to monitor their movements and habits. I mean, you got millions of Muslims in China, in that area, right? And they monitor everything, right? Like if you freaking, in China, if you cross the street, they'll dictate your, they will see your gaze, they will recognize your face and send you the ticket in the mail for jaywalking, which is kind of crazy. Okay, let's see what else we got. Government official shows up at your home. You're told you'll be taking part in a new anti-poverty program sent hundreds of miles away from your friends and family to work in a factory. And you know you don't have a choice. Everyone's heard about the concentration camps popping up all over your homeland. There are whispers that women are tortured, raped, forcibly sterilized, and worse. So what else can you do but go? You get to the factory. You aren't allowed to pray or read the Quran. You're segregated from other workers. You're given... Hey, I mean... That's a blessing right there. That specifically is a blessing. The work camps, all that stuff. I don't know if I'm <laughs> that's evil. But this is I mean, this is communism, right? It's like two evil ideas that when you take them to the extreme, they're going to end up being awful. Given a curfew, you're not allowed to go home freely. And every day at the factory, what do you see over and over again? A Nike swoosh. In a 2020 expose of the Qindao Taiwan factory, the Washington Post reported that this was the reality for Uyghur workers at a Nike supplier that has made over 8 million Nike shoes. We're concerned Nike and Adidas aren't doing enough to implement the bipartisan Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act. In fact, Nike, along with Apple, Coca-Cola, and others, spent lavishly on lobbying to water down the bill. We need answers. We need to end American support for forced labor. We need to just do it. They will never do that, but very sad these faces most stay stoic in china or how many uyghurs are there specifically curious i don't want to take forever to freaking find them don't but... give way to their fear they're the faces of those condemned to china's mass incarceration for the thought crime of being born uyghur if you don't know what's happening it's not i uh, see this is i don't really understand the reason to avoid it it's really it's 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 the Muslim aspect to it. I think that we can all agree on that. I don't think that it's offensive, especially if you're covering it. I don't really understand it. <laughs> Let the people go to church. It's a Sunday. Hey, Amen. What time is it in? Uh, I mean, it's 5 p.m. on this side, so I think everybody's gone now. But happening to China's Uyghur Muslims in the re-education camps. Okay, he said Muslims, thank God. Deep in Xinjiang, I am devoting the next few of my poems to illuminate their story the best. Other poems? Okay, if it gets too cringy, I'm gonna hit next. That I can. These photos are from an article today by John. S by the way, I've heard of again. I said this in the intro. I've heard of like nasty stuff. Again, organ harvesting, um, executions. Uh, we've already talked about. I mean, he covered forced labor. So this is awful, and nobody's talking about it. But we'll get to that a little bit later. Sudworth in a huge cache of data obtained by the BBC. And they reveal more of the nightmarish fate of the Uyghurs at the behest of the CCP. Some of the crimes stated include traveling to sensitive countries or illegally preaching forbidden religion. Though on many, it is simply not stated. Conf it's interesting to see this like civil war in a lot of these movements. Like you have communist Marxists talking about like, wow, they're suppressing their ability to practice their faith. But like Marxists and communists are the most anti-religious uh, people, groups, and they hate God and they hate, you know, any sort of religion. So it's just really cringe to see, but, and it's like social justice. It's like, bro, you know, you do realize you are speaking out against a communist country, you know, putting forth laws that is the ultimate conclusion of your ideas. Fine to these 21st century ethnic minority prisons. is the president of the Islamic Association of Zuar and the Xinjiang Islamic Institute. He belongs to the Uyghur ethnic group. Over the years, the center has received millions in funding from the Chinese government. 
This is like, this feels like a uh, propaganda video, but I don't know. Before I came to Xinjiang, I intentionally decided to prepare as little as possible about the institute. Sheesh, I heard in a video that Muslim imams were first made to eat pork, drink alcohol, and then dance by Chinese soldiers in these camps. Sheesh. I mean, dude, communism is no joke. These atheists out here that are like, yeah, atheism is going to be great. It always creates a vacuum, which is communism. And this is like, this is like some... Orwellian communism type of things right here made them eat pork drink alcohol and then dance by Chinese soldiers Like we've already had this history and we, for some reason people are like yeah, China's great So I expected to visit an office on a busy street in town Instead I experienced a vast complex covering thousands of square meters Ten religious institutions. See this is like North Korea footage right here. Look look at they all have their arms the same way Institutions exist in Xinjiang including the Xinjiang Islamic Institute and its eight branches and one Islamic scriptures school. The Islamic operation is comprehensive and around. <laughs> yeah, this is so fake. This is the fakest thing I've ever seen. Uyghur Muslims in concentration camps. Did you know that? The women are being raped. Their children are being killed. Where leaders knew that? Did you know that? We're watching the... I'm, we're going to get like one video like this, and then I bet the rest of her channel is like 99 anti Israel posts. A literal genocide happening right in front of our eyes. Misinformation's being spread purposefully. So you better go click the link in my bio and then go sign. I don't know like how this is associated with like a positive melody. It's kind of creepy, but. Some petitions and then go donate to some orgs who are making a difference while you're at it. Maybe organizations that are making a difference what in the world are they going to do this is this is like some government level stuff that needs to be brought forth like but nobody in the american government specifically even cares muslims don't even care and it's their own people like it's sad but what are you going to do at least at least speak on it but people aren't speaking on it all they care all muslims care about is israel palestine Video too, cause besides money public pressure is the best tool to use say it with me now staying silent is violence and doing nothing is Staying silent is violence. Lethal. How do you have the conscience to watch the murder innocent people? If you know people are dying and there's something that you can do, it's not only selfish but evil to sit back because it's inconvenient to you. As she's like doing her makeup. This man coming suddenly stake my mouth and give my head black hood, give my hand hand cup, take me to from airport. So when I go to airport, the so police car uh, in, enter the police car inside. They push me strongly. I fall down and broken my nose. I need to scream, but I cannot. <laughs> hypocrites calling hypocrites hypocrites. That's pretty good. Not because he take my mouth. From that time until more than two months, I spent the Chinese camp without. I don't know where is my three kids and my parents or my husband. Nobody visit me. She went to the gulag. Nobody come to see me or search me. But this uh, more than two months, every two days, he take me to outside question room, question and have a lot of torture, beating, something. So that day I go to a Chinese hospital. And <laughs> Dang, you're soulless. I mean, I don't know if she's lying. I don't think she's lying. Uh, but I mean, I don't. The CCP is communism is evil like you gotta people gotta look at what happened in russia um even i mean even if you just look at russia i mean oh my gosh man it was disgusting it was evil i mean a lot of this stuff was happening um to people that weren't part of the party so this doesn't surprise me at all at all of course they're gonna cover it up and rmt children hospital and I, I see my uh, one son, Moise, and the daughter, Elena, they had big surgery from their neck. And their health is very, very bad condition. And they gave me another, my son, Mohammed, his dead body. They say your son is dead morning because we gave him surgery. Yeah, I've heard of this har organ harvesting stuff is real. Well, also partially because... Um, traditionally apparently the chinese people they are not in favor of like you know when you pass away you you put down whether you're an organ donor or not apparently culturally the chinese people are against it so they are very 
um, desperate to get any sort of organs because it's like very, very lucrative. So I think it's like a double reasoning as to why, but it's foul, foul, foul. It's the oldest total of five months. I didn't see my kids. I okay, this is kind of dark, but let's see what else we got. Remember in our prayers this Ramadan is the Uyghur Muslims, just like Israel, um, their p attacks and their brutality towards the Palestinian Muslims. Yeah, the Uyghurs, just like Israel, <laughs> just like Israel. The Uyghur Muslims also go through a lot during this Ramadan. They are being persecuted in China and we need to um, keep... Wealthy Arab Muslims are some of the customers for these organs. I believe it. I believe it. Them in our du'as, we need to pray very strongly for them, just like we pray for Palestine, Sudan, Congo, Haiti, and all these other nations. We need to keep these people in our hearts, in our du'as, because our people, this is a, this is a. Man, the prayers are not working to to whatever whatever thing you praying to. It, it ain't working. Crime against Islam, I would say, because Muslims, it looks like it's just an attack upon our people, our religion. It's just insane, and let's keep these people in our du'as as well. Just a reminder of the kind of brutality these people have faced in China. Human rights groups have accused China of sweeping a million or more people from Muslim minority groups into detention camps, where many have said they were tortured, sexually assaulted, and forced. Can you imagine a group of people that suppress other people's religions? As a Muslim woman, can you imagine that? How evil is that to suppress other people's religion? to attack people just because they don't support your religion or lack thereof. Isn't that evil? Forced to abandon their language and religion. They go through so much hardship and so much brutality in these detention camps. The stories, if you hear the stories of these... The a boyfriend or a husband or a partner or whatever it is, you are in a relationship with someone and you are living with them and you are instead forced to sleep next to a random police officer. And I'm not saying just sleep, you know, out of your will, there's no consent involved, and you literally live in the same house as your partner, yet policemen come in at night, and they will be the one to share the bed with you. Think about there's a certain food that you don't like, maybe it's like, I don't know, Brussels sprouts or like whatever people don't like, and you don't want to eat that food, and you have been vegetarian for years, and you know, that you don't like to eat meat or you and imagine police officers or government officials literally forcing you to eat that food that you do not like this is what is happening to the yugis those are only two examples there are other examples if you look up online that are way too horrific that i can't even say on this platform and like i said in my other video it is not a religious issue i'm using those examples because yes the yugis are muslim they're a muslim community and like you know in the religion we don't eat pork and you know they're married to people basically and they're being forced to share beds with police officers and not their husbands anyone who is a woman or a man should be able to understand how horrific that is and how little control you have over your life and how you're being forced to do things that are against your wishes you know against your beliefs against you know whatever it is yeah, wouldn't that suck to have to compromise your beliefs? That's what Muslims do in every Muslim country. So and it's it's crazy, right? Like, doesn't it suck? So what I'm saying is please keep the same. And I'm not justifying it. What they're doing is evil. I'm just saying keep that same energy. Same energy that you have. If you are someone. Oh, that's weird. She said the same thing as me. Someone who's boycotting certain fashion brands. And even if you're not boycotting those fashion brands, please look into Sheen because it is such... I know this because I literally shopped there. Like, I love it. I loved it. And I know how easy it is to shop from there. It's so affordable. I get it. It's got loads of options, you know. But the things they're doing, they're sending these Yugis to camps and they are literally... And this horrible stuff is happening. It's not even just that, oh, they're having to work there. You know, really horrible stuff is happening to them whilst at these camps. It's forced labour. It's being exploited. It's being separated from their families, their children, to go and work. An Asian American who... Okay, so look at what this reads. Good for China... Uh, I, I assume this is a comment she's responding to, and this comment is responding to a video discussing potentially China's support for Palestine. So the comment reads, reads, good for China, but they can't really criticize Israel, honestly, when they are collecting the Uyghurs and others Muslims in re-education camps. So let's see, let's see what she has to say about it. I don't know. 
Again, I'm an Asian American who grew up with a lot of internalized Sinophobia due to being raised around so much United States propaganda about China, and when I first heard about Uyghurs six or seven years ago, I thought that sounds exactly like something that China would do. However, let's be clear that China does not just criticize Israel. China full-on supports Palestine, and not only that... <laughs> this is like Disney, Disney Channel... Uh, this is like Disney type of uh, view of the world. Like China full on supports Palestine. They want them to have their, their homeland. Like China. China over there that's got a bunch of other stuff they're dealing with. You know, trade wars, real wars. Yeah, they, they really need uh Palestine. They 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 fight for them. They they got a lot of compassion for them. No, none of these leaders have compassion for anybody. But Arab and Muslim leaders met in China in November to discuss ending the war in Gaza. Now, China can give all of the lip service it wants to criticizing Israel and can give all of the lip service it wants to supporting Palestine, but how would it make sense for Arab and Muslim leaders to meet in China to discuss ending the war in Palestine if they are aware that China is committing genocide against its Muslim ethnic minority? Because they don't care. They, they could kill a million Muslims. They wouldn't care. None of these Arab leaders, none of these Muslim leaders would care. They don't care. They don't, they care about money and power, that's it. Now, I'm not denying that China does not have a good track record with respect to human rights. Forced labor and re-education camps are real. However, the United States has a tendency to weaponize and propagandize legit- See, look, look, look where she's going with this. She's redirecting the, the diversion. This is like a, a typical uh, argument tactic, right? Like you, no accountability. And then when there is accountability and there is no way out of this accountability, you divert, well, look at America, look at the Zionists, look at blah, blah, blah. It's like, bruh, it just doesn't make sense. You're full of crap. Legitimate concerns about the treatment of minorities in and around China and to interfere with those conflicts in a way that not only harms China, but winds up harming the minorities that the United States claims to support. You can learn about the CIA's 20-year anti-Chinese operation in Tibet and that the 14th Dalai Lama feels that United States interference in Tibet ultimately wound up harming Tibetans. Because the United States wasn't engaging in those actions to support Tibet and Tibetans based on a moral high ground. Heck no. No leader does anything for a moral high ground. They were interfering in order to use Tibet to sabotage China. Then, when Nixon decided to form a better relationship with China, the United States abandoned Tibet. Similarly, as a Taiwanese American, as much as I advocate for Taiwan's right of self-determination, I am able to recognize how the United States engages in a similar push and pull with Taiwan and weaponizes. It's funny seeing the stupidity of this ideology because they have to side with Taiwan. Leftists have to side with Taiwan, right? Because it's a smaller country. Taiwan, look at them. They're so innocent. Obviously, they're they're the good guys in this dynamic. China, look how big they are. They're fascists. They're capitalists now. You know, even though they're less capitalists than Taiwan, but it doesn't matter because they're big. They're the majority. But they don't know how to like get around these other you know interti intertwining contradictory ethos that they've decided to subscribe to Taiwan against China. So the United States. So now she's saying, oh, Taiwan's a branch of of America, so we shouldn't support them on and weaponizes Taiwan against China. So the United States tends to interfere in a way that makes it impossible to have actual conversations about what are the legitimate concerns and legitimate criticisms about these situations. It, it really it, it's that's not the case. You have no moral framework that is consistent and rational. It's all based off of a creepy, creepy religion called Marxism that alters your view of justice, of decency, and you will struggle in life to make sense of anything.